It's our second day in Manila. Today we will visit Fort Santiago, walk around Intramuros City and enjoy the sunset from a hotel rooftop patio. As we mentioned in our previous episode, we're staying in Makati. Our hotel is located a bit away from the downtown core, so we're using Uber to get around. It's obviously not a problem to find a hotel in the city center if you have the budget for it. Or you can save a few bucks and stay at a mid-range hotel away from the city center and use Uber as a mean of transportation. However, the most popular means of transportation are the jeepneys. Originally, they were made from World War II leftover American military jeeps. Until this day, they carry that look. Every jeepney is different and decorated in its own unique style. There are about 200,000 jeepneys in Metro Manila alone. Due to their outdated diesel engines, they are one of the main contributors to air pollution in the city. They are also in violation of vehicle safety standards and government is trying to regulate them and reduce their numbers. While driving through Metro Manila, we've noticed its architectural variety from different historical and cultural periods. You can clearly see the blend of Asian, European and North American influences. Another thing you can't help but notice is that most buildings are poorly maintained. Exteriors look dirty with clear signs of deterioration. This gives the city grimy and dramatic look. First on the list is Fort Santiago. It's open every day from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. There is a small admission fee of 75 pesos for an adult and 50 pesos for a child. to start on a historical note and we're exploring Fort Santiago. It is military defense structure built in 16th century during Spanish colonial period. Fort Santiago is located within Intramuros area which is also known as Walled City. If you enjoy history, it's highly recommended to hire a tour guide which you will be offered at the entrance to the Fort Santiago. Or you can do is ask just Wikipedia the information about the area that you're about to explore. The name Intramuros came from Latin and translates to within the walls. It occupies 64 hectares and is surrounded by almost 5 kilometers of wall. Within the walls, there are many points of interest, museums, churches, and even a golf course. Intramuros was the center of religion, education, and economy. The standard way of life in Intramuros became the standard way of life throughout the Philippines. The areas outside the walls were referred to as Extramuros until 1901 when Americans declared that Manila consisted of both Intramuros and Extramuros areas. Inside Fort Santiago you can find a museum dedicated to Jose Rizal, who is a Filipino national hero. Unfortunately, the Rizal Shrine was closed during the hours we were visiting Fort Santiago. We left Fort Santiago and went for a nice stroll around Intramuros City. We passed by Manila Cathedral, which is only a few minutes walk from Fort Santiago. It's one of the oldest Roman Catholic churches in Manila from Spanish colonial time. It was destroyed many times by earthquakes and once during World War II. The present structure was completed in 1958 and is considered to be an important religious and historic landmark. Walking the streets in Manila, you need to keep your eyes peeled. It's not always easy, sidewalks are often narrow and might include obstacles like this one.
While walking around Intramuros, we've noticed that some streets still maintain Spanish colonial charm. The cobblestone and architecture made us reminiscent about the place where both of us grew up. Some of you may not know a small country in Europe called Latvia and its capital Riga. It also has old cities, cobblestone streets and century-old buildings that brought up childhood memories. Minus the scorching sun and tropical humidity, which was never part of it. What gave us the mixed impression was the contrast between busy streets with popular tourist sites and streets where people were drying their clothes outside and doing dishes on the sidewalk. We couldn't really wrap our heads around it, not sure if it's related to poverty or just a lifestyle. We don't really want to stress this topic, but if any of you have any comments on this, we would love to hear it. The street name signs are not always easy to find. Navigating through the streets might sometimes be challenging. We mostly relied on Google Maps and still managed to get lost a few times. But everyone was very friendly and helped us find our way. Well, thank you. I love the walls of Intramuros feeling impressed with the rich and complex history of Manila that we've learned so far. The day was getting hotter, so we decided to catch an Uber and head back to the hotel to refresh and continue with our plans for the evening. It's not always easy and sometimes very time-consuming to call an Uber in Manila. Definitely longer wait times than we are used to in North America. Maybe due to congested streets and road conditions. Uber is very cheap comparing to Canada and States. On average, 20 km drive took us about an hour in traffic and cost between 8 to 10 Canadian dollars. Another app that we sometimes use is Grab. The prices are pretty much the same, but the system works a bit different. We suggest having both apps handy when traveling since both of them are popular in Southeast Asia. This time our Uber was taking extra long and we started to wonder if maybe we should try taking a jeepney but couldn't figure out how the system works, which one is going in the direction of our hotel and how much it would cost us. So we decided to give our Uber another 5 minutes. Our Uber is finally here, and a few hours later we're back in downtown Manila fighting through heavy evening traffic. One of the things we like to do when visiting big cities is to check out their tallest buildings, try a few fancy restaurants and finding the best rooftop patios to enjoy the sunset. After doing a bit of research, we chose the Pan Pacific Hotel to watch the sunset. We looked at the map and realized that the hotel is only 15 minute walk away from the Bay Walk. To our surprise, the Bay Walk was not very enjoyable. It smelled fishy, dead fishy. We didn't stay too long and headed in the direction of Pan Pacific Hotel. We're going to Pan Pacific Hotel to grab a snack, have a drink and enjoy the view and the sunset. Yeah. Pan Pacific Hotel is located in the middle of city shopping district and only 2 kilometers away from Intramuros. It's a 5-star, 21-story hotel. It features 5 restaurants and 3 cafes with their popular Sunset Lounge, which is located on the 7th floor. When we got to the Sunset Lounge, we were not impressed with the view, as it was obstructed by buildings. We quickly filmed the sunset on time-lapse, had a snack and a beer, and left. It was a long and very tiring day, so we decided to call it a night. Stay tuned for our next episode.
Bye.